Recently, I had a viewer ask how and where they should test their starting system. Now, their problem was that their vehicle would not crank and park. It would crank in neutral, but it wouldn't start. So I put together this presentation to help them understand and know how and where to test this system. Now, it uses a diagram, color coding, creative thinking, and it will show the test points and what to expect at those points. Now, I'm going to be using the Power Pro. It's a very useful tool. But keep in mind, you can do the same thing with your multimeter, and it's much easier to test, too, if you actually have the Load Pro as one of your leads. It may help you as well. So here it is. Testing the starter system. What to look for and where to test. Now we're going to be using a 2000 Toyota Corolla in this example. Now we're going to be using critical thinking as well. And what does that mean? Well, when you get information, you have to be asking yourself, what does this piece of the puzzle actually mean? Now here's our basic diagram again for the 2000 Corolla. Now first, let's identify the ground at rest. We're going to be coloring the ground at rest green. Now, here's the ground, but first look, there are three options on this diagram. We have a U.S. product, so we're going to be using option number two. Now, all the grounds travel up until they stop at an open. Now, as long as the starter has continuity, that's true, the ground's going to travel right through it. So if you did not have continuity in your starter, you would not have ground at that point. Now, there's also a ground that goes to the ECM. That's the supply ground to the ECM. Notice that that's a dotted box. So there's a whole lot more that goes to the ECM. This is just showing these two points that go into the ECM. Now let's look at the power at rest. On the power, it travels the same way. As long as there's continuity, it travels, but it stops at an open. Now as we proceed, this is with your key off. Remember, power at rest and ground at rest when your key is off. Now we have some transmission options in this diagram, both for a manual on the left and an automatic on the right. So we're going to eliminate the manual because we have an automatic transmission. Now what if it would crank in neutral, but it wouldn't start? There's some critical thinking you need to think about here. What would that piece of the puzzle mean? All a starter needs to crank is power and ground. So since it cranks, it has all it needs to work. Sure, it may not be without a problem, but it cranks, so it has continuity. The starter is not open. So let's go back to our ground. This piece of information proves that the starter has continuity. It also proves that this feed ground is good. So the starter itself is not the issue. Now, when you're testing, we should always be asking ourselves, what should we have with the key off or at rest? Here's our power and ground all displayed. Now let's first look at just the power side. Now you should have 12.2 volts or voltage here and that should be system voltage. Now the real value that you should be looking for is your system voltage, not 12.2. I'm using 12.2 to represent whatever your system voltage is with the key off. As we move up to the next point, you should have again system voltage as long as this fuse is good. Of course, if that fuse is gone, now that's a fusible link. So if that link is blown, you would have not have power at this point. Now you would also have system voltage at this point as long as this fuse is good. And you would have system voltage up to the ignition switch. You would also have system voltage down to the starter, again with your key off. Now let's do the ground side. Now a good value for a good ground would actually be 0.5 volts, half a volt or less. Now that's pretty generous. A better value would probably be like 0.3 or 0.2 or less. So if you're actually showing 0.5, then you're right at the verge of a bad ground. Back to our diagram. So we should have a ground at this point. We should also have a ground over here. And at both of these points, now notice here, there's two wires that come out of here, and they both should have the same ground, as long as there is continuity in that starter relay. Of course, if there's no continuity, 
ground can't travel through it and you would not have ground at either one of those points. You should also have ground over here feeding the ECM and you should have ground coming up to the park neutral switch. Now here you shouldn't have anything. No power or ground so you really should have nothing on your multimeter. And the same thing here at this point. No power or ground. Again this is all what you should have with your key off. And up here at this final point again you should have nothing. No power or no ground because there's no continuity. You're in between two open switches so you should have nothing on your multimeter. Now keep in mind this is what you should have with your key off. So now let's turn the key to the start position. We want that starter to run. So now we close on the ignition switch. We switch to the start position. So our switch closes and we should have battery voltage through it. And that should sit here and wait for a close at the neutral park neutral switch. So we should have battery system voltage to it. As we switch to either park or neutral, we should close that switch and then that system voltage should travel through the switch and we should have system voltage down here as well. Now when we have system voltage at the top, remember there's already a ground there so power meets ground at the load which is the coil in the relay. So you'd have system voltage on the top side and you should have ground on the bottom. Now the coil energizes and it magnetically pulls the contacts closed and when those contacts close it continues to send that power down to the starter. Now remember that starter had ground so power meets ground at the load. Again you should have system voltage at the top and you have ground already supplied to it. And then at that point the motor should run because it has power and ground. Now I want you to notice there are two loads here. One is the starter motor and the other is a coil. Now look close. This is a solid box with two loads in it. One is a motor and the other one is a coil and both are inside the starter and both receive power at the same time. So what is this solid box? It is the starter motor and the solenoid all together packaged as one unit. Now this coil energizes and magnetically pulls the contacts closed, right? And when that happens, the motor runs. But the motor is already running, isn't it? Now critical thinking, what does this piece of the puzzle tell you? Well, when the engine starts and you turn the key back to the on run position or on, well, when that happens, you lose this power. The relay shuts off and the starter shuts off. So this is really what we call a pull-in coil and this is what we call a hold-in coil. Why do we have both? Well it takes a whole lot more amperage to pull a contact closed than it does to keep it closed. That's really another topic in itself and, itself, and we can cover that in a different day. So what does this piece of the puzzle mean over here? What's going on at the BCM? Well when the key is in the start position you have power at both of these points, right? So the ECM knows that the park neutral switch has closed. Now also when the key is in the start position, you have power at this point. If you follow the diagram, the power goes right to it. So the ECM, being a logic device, knows that the ignition switch is closed. Now when the engine starts and you turn the key back to run or in the on position, you lose this power. So the ECM then knows that the ignition switch has opened. Now keep in mind this presentation was on the starting system, not the ignition system. If your starter will actually engage and, and crank over, then it's not a starting motor issue, it's an ignition system issue. And you can use these same principles on the diagram for your ignition system. If I can help you with any particular problem, a particular system, color coding a diagram, understanding how a system works, or a particular component, then let me know and I'll see what I can do to help. Thanks.